everyone. My name's Sarah and this is my channel, So Sarah Sewed. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you everything I made in the months of April and May. I didn't end up making a monthly roundup video for April because I didn't make all that many things in April. And one of the things I did make, I had shared in my week of making video in April. So I thought instead I would combine all of my makes for April and May into this video. So the first thing I'll tell you about is what I'm wearing today because this is a new make. This is the Vera Top by Forget Me Not Patterns. It's a pattern I've been thinking about making for a while. It's a free pattern and I've also had this fabric in my stash for a while. So I had thought about making this as part of the So Frugal 22 challenge in March, but I ran out of time in March. This is a v-neck jersey top that has voluminous sleeves that can either be left in a bell shape or it can be gathered into two um, different cuffs. The first one being a narrow cuff and the other one being a wide cuff. Now I've chosen to make mine with the narrow cuff. So it ends up finishing around the three quarter mark on my arm, which is perfect for me because I usually roll up my sleeves anyway. So I really, really love the feeling of this top. I've made it in a bamboo that I bought from Darn Cheap Fabrics last year. And I think the drape of this bamboo, um, just gives it, especially the sleeves, a really, really nice look. The top doesn't have a huge amount of length on it, but it's um, really is the perfect length for me. I feel it looks good untucked, but it's also long enough that I can tuck it in to my pants as well. So um, really enjoying this Vera top. In terms of difficulty, it wasn't difficult. Um, really the only thing that was new for me or a little bit difficult was achieving the V neckline. The instructions are really good, um, but I did still struggle a little bit with getting a really clean and neat V. Um, this piece here has a little join and I couldn't get it to line up exactly in line with the V. And I did attempt it a couple of times, but in the end I decided that no one's gonna notice it's close enough and um, I was happy with it. So I ended up just leaving it like this and hopefully you can't really tell anyway. Um, yeah, but I really do like this V shape. It's not too plunging, um, but just, just give a nice uh, different neckline to anything else I have made before. Apart from that, there were no other skills that I hadn't made um, on other jersey tops. So um, inserting the neckband, the rest of it was just the same as any other neckband. And then I've made other sleeves that gather into cuffs as well before. So that wasn't a challenge. The actual bamboo was a little bit tricky to work with as it's quite slippery. Um, I don't really enjoy working with bamboo, don't really enjoy sewing with it, but I do really enjoy wearing it. So it was worth the effort in the end. This is a very, very comfortable um, top and I plan to make another one soon. This pattern is available for body measurements up to a 48 inch bust and a 52 and a half inch hip. Personally, I made a size 38, which matched my, I looked at my bust measurement to figure out what size I was going to make. And I'm really, really happy with the fit of this one. The actual pattern pieces were really easy to print as they were layers. So I was able to just print that size 38 um, and very, very clear instructions and easy to follow. So highly recommend the Vera Top by Forget Me Not Patterns. The next item I'll talk about is one that you might have seen me making in my April video, which was a week of making in April. And it's the Billy Sweater Dress by Tilly and the Buttons. So the Billy Sweater pattern comes with, it's just a regular sweater with regular sleeves, but it also can have big balloon sleeves and it also can be made into a dress. And then you can use any of those options to make um, the variation of your choice. I have made several of the Billy sweaters before um, in all of the different variations. So I've made a few of the balloon sleeved sweaters. Um, I've made a regular sleeve sweater. I've made a regular sleeve sweater dress. And then this time I thought I would like to make the balloon sleeve sweater dress. There's something about the, the fit of the balloon sleeve um, pieces that seem to just feel a bit more relaxed on my body. Um, I really, really enjoy the way it feels and also the way it looks. So I made the regular sleeve sweater dress last year and I do find that I reach for it a lot on the weekends just to wear with leggings and runners um, uh, to get my weekend things done. 
And I love the feeling of it in a French Terry that I got from Nerida Hansen. So, so I do like to keep my eye on the French Terries that Nerida Hansen has because they're really good quality. They're 100% cotton, um, but also just the prints are so fun. So this one is a print by Field Day Studio. And it's on a navy blue background with all these um, flowers. So that's the fabric I had. And then I needed to decide um, what kind of ribbing I would use for the neckband, the cuffs and the hemband. And I had a raspberry um, ribbing from my design in my stash. And I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but I absolutely love the way it turned out in the end. So I think this colour then really picks up on these... Um, pinks and purples within the floral print and I think it works really really nicely and makes a really good contrast. So I'm glad I didn't end up going with a navy and I was able to just use something I already had in my stash. So I'll put some pictures in of how this looks. Um, it's quite a short dress I think um, but I would never wear it without leggings anyway so that is fine. I decided to make a size 5 for this sweater dress, which I think works really well for me. Um, my measurements put me around a size 5 or a size 6 in Tilly and the Buttons patterns, um, but I'd made the size 5 Billy sweater several times before with the balloon sleeves and I thought the fit was really good, so I went with that for this one as well. So this pattern from Tilly and the Buttons is available up to a 48 inch bust and a 51 inch hip measurement. I feel like this is a really nice casual dress that can be worn just with runners on the weekends, but because it's got those balloon sleeves and this beautiful fabric, I think that that does elevate it a little bit and wearing it with boots makes it a little bit more dressed up and I've um, enjoyed wearing it several times since I made it in April. The next item I'd like to share with you is some more Pietra Pants by Closet Core Patterns. Now, this is a pattern that's available in three different views. One of them being shorts, which I haven't made. One of them being wide leg pants, which I have made. And another being the tapered pants, which I've also made. So each time I've made these, I've made them in a size 14, which seems to work very well around my hips. But I always seem to have to bring in the waistband elastic a significant amount, probably even less than the size 12 elastic recommends. So I thought this time I might try and grade the pattern. So I followed a tutorial I found on Instagram and I think that was through a um, an account called so to speak and I got some advice about how to grade this pattern because there are a lot of pieces um, and especially the pocket piece that sort of extends from the waist to the hip and then gets folded and it was a little bit um, uh, it could have been a little bit confusing without following along with uh, some help so I graded from a size 12 waist to the 12 to the 14 hip in this pattern um, and I used a midweight cotton I bought from Nerida Hansen. I had it in my stash for a fair while and I feel like these look really good from the front. They fit really nicely around my hips and my waist but around my bum and from the back they're just not quite as comfortable. They sort of, I feel like they're dragging down a little bit at the back. So I wore them a little bit while we were on holidays in April um, up in Queensland, but I just felt slightly like they were just not quite right from behind. I don't think you can really tell in pictures, but I do feel it's just a slight discomfort, very slight. Um, I'm not sure if it's the weight of the fabric or the fact that maybe I shouldn't have graded a certain piece or I've, you know, I've, I've um, done something wrong. I don't know. But uh, I feel like this is the end of my Pietra pants kind of experimenting and I'm going to now be moving on to other patterns. Um, this pattern is available in two size bands from 0 to 20 and also from size 14 to 32 with the size 32 going up to a hip measurement of 63 inches. So yeah I think I'll get some wear out of these pants in the summer. I've, I've, I've used a, a cotton that was in my stash that's a very you know summery holiday kind of print so it's not something I'll wear to work or anything like that um, but I thought it was worth giving the grading a go and seeing if they would turn into my perfect pants but unfortunately um, it wasn't the case this time. 
So on to one of my proudest makes of the year, or perhaps even ever, and that is the Heather Blazer by Friday Pattern Company. Now, now this is a pattern I bought last year and have been looking forward to making it for a long time, but hadn't decided on what fabrics I was going to use. And then in, in March. March, in the lead up to my birthday, I decided that I was going to treat myself to some birthday fabrics. Um, and make myself the Heather Blazer as a birthday treat to myself. So I decided I'd like to make the outer um, fabric with a heavy linen and I got that from my design and I was also wanting to match it with a Lady McElroy cotton lawn. Now it's a cotton lawn called Dip in the Lake and it's one that I'd been admiring for a long time and I thought what can I make with this fabric? But I ended up deciding while it's extremely beautiful it was just going to be too much as a full garment for me. I've got so many prints in my um, in my wardrobe and and I just thought, you know what, I should make something a bit more plain and use this print, this beautiful print, as a lining instead and um, give it that sort of special something that way. So I've got a bit of an off cut of this, so I'm not sure. Maybe it will end up going into a quilt or something one day. But this is the Dip in the Lake fabric. So it's got these... Ladies swimming in this beautiful lush kind of forest lake kind of setting. So absolutely beautiful. And then I paired that with a heavy um, linen in the color called Emerald from My Design. When I reached out to My Design and asked if those two were a good match, they were very helpful in sending me some photos with them together, um, which confirmed that they would look great together. So that was very helpful. So on to the blazer. I thought really long and hard about what size I would make, first of all, and whether I would take any length out of this pattern. I read a lot of people saying it's really big, they've had to downsize, um, it's, you know, it's a very oversized pattern. And I ended up deciding that I would pretty much go with my bust measurement and not downsize. So my bust measurement put me around the size large. My hips and waist were um, probably in the size extra large, but I went with the size large. And I'm really happy that I did because it fits really well. It's, I mean, it's supposed to be an oversized blazer. So I decided I would embrace that and um, just go with the, the size large that was going to give me that oversized look. I also thought about whether I would take any of the length off the blazer. I'm only 160 centimeters tall and I worried that it would be too long. So I read a lot of reviews and looked at a lot of people's descriptions of their own Heather Blazers and I was particularly looking for whether people had um, taken any length out of it. And I did find some people who are around the same height as me had reduced the length. Um, but in the end, I, I took the paper pattern piece and I held, it, um, I held it against my body and I decided that the length it was going to be was a length that I liked anyway. Um, I thought if I made it any shorter, it might end up finishing around my widest point. And I thought I wanted to go a bit further than that, a bit below my hip um, line. And um, again, as I said, just embrace that oversized blazer look. So the pattern has the outer fabric, the lining fabric, and then it's got two different types of interfacing that you need to cut out, a woven interfacing and a knit interfacing. So to be perfectly honest, the cutting out of this project took me about two and a half weeks. So I might do just the, uh, I did the linen one, um, one night or probably over a few nights and then the lining another time. And then it took a little bit of time before I found that motivation to then cut out the interfacing. And then, um, it wasn't until, yeah, two and a half weeks later that I began the sewing of the project. And once the sewing got underway, it took me probably about 10 days from sewing those first stitches to finishing the project. I never really had big long chunks of time to work on this project so it was just a little bit each day to get this blazer finished in that time frame. Chelsea from the Friday Pattern Company has made a YouTube sew along for the entire blazer which was really helpful. Um, I found myself looking at the instructions and then watching the video to make sure I was following along with every step um, and most of the time I found it very clear. There were a couple of times where I felt like things were kind of glossed over quite quickly um, and I was like oh I think I'm doing the right thing I'll give it a go and see if it worked out and it always did 
um, so that was good. There's a separate video about doing the hem of the of the pattern and again there were a couple of times where I thought hang on that doesn't exactly look like um, the picture in the pattern or it doesn't exactly look like what I'm doing but I just decided to trust um, what she was saying try it and then it ended up working out there were a couple of times I had to sort of follow my intuition a little bit um, where you know where things were maybe not as clear as they could have been but it did all work out really nicely in the end. Probably the hardest thing for me in this entire pattern was getting the sleeves inserted into the arm side. Um, there are some gathers that you need to make between notches on the shoulder. And I just found it was really hard for me to get the gathers um, accurate with, within the notches without it becoming puckered so that took me quite a long time um, but the rest of it there was nothing really difficult about this pattern and then you end up with a really um, polished looking garment because of all the lining on the inside and it's really beautiful I think. So I was thinking I always knew that I'd um, roll up the cuffs on my blazer I'll just grab it. So here's my finished blazer and obviously I'll put some proper pictures in but um, I knew that I would be wanting to roll up the sleeves most of the time on my blazer and I thought okay well if I've got this beautiful lining fabric I really didn't want to roll up the sleeves and then have you know an upside down swimmer on the cuffs so when I was cutting out my lining I ended up cutting out the lining arm pieces upside down as it turns out, um, I ended up just with some foliage and things on the sleeve cuffs, so it wouldn't have made a difference. But it is something to keep in mind if you are um, using a directional print on a heather blazer and want those um, cuffs to turn and be not upside down, you might want to cut your sleeves upside down um, as an option. So I'll put some pictures in of me wearing this blazer. So I wore it to work recently so um, and I took these pictures straight after getting out of the car so it's a little bit creased at the back so I apologize for that um, but you can see that it is quite long it is quite oversized but I think that you know it's the style and um, I like the way it looks so I'm really happy that I went with this size and didn't shorten it. I also just took some photos of me wearing it with this top and jeans so you can see um, how it looks with some different clothes underneath. The sleeves are quite close fitting so it's not something I'll be able to wear with anything bulky underneath. So it's not something I think I'll get too much wear out of during the winter um, but it will be definitely very very handy through all the rest of the year. I'm lucky I live very close to a button shop, a specialist button shop called Button Mania in Melbourne and I took my blazer there um, just when it was at that final touch and had them help me choose a button for this blazer and I, and I ended up finding this um, vintage button that I think works really nicely. I'll put some pictures in that are a little bit clearer to see that but that was the finishing touch on the blazer. There's a really big size range available on the Heather Blazer um, with the top size being available up to a 67 inch chest and a 72 inch hip. I definitely think I'll make another one of these and um, yeah, already starting to think about the color combinations I'd like to use. The next item I finished I'm also really proud of. It's a knitting project and it's the Sunday Sweater by Petite Knit. Now I started knitting in around April of 2021 and this was one of the first um, patterns that I put into my sort of folder of um, things I want to be able to knit one day. So it was really exciting to um, work on and finish this particular jumper. There were two things that really appealed to me about this particular jumper. The first being the interesting ribbing pattern that goes all the way around the top, um, which kind of reminds me of like sun's rays and also the balloon um, the balloon shaped sleeves i've got some, I've, i think i've got a thing for balloon um, sleeves i really like them so this jumper is knit um with chunky yarn and i bought some yarn from a shop called kit couture in denmark and they have a yarn called their blow yarn which is a mix of different um, fibers 
but the thing that really appealed to me about it was the fact that it's got these little specks of other colors going all the way through it. There were a lot of colors to choose from, but I went with beige and you can see all these different colors through the yarn, which I think really gave it some nice interest. I feel like it gives it interest um, as a final product, but it was also just really nice to knit with because every so often you'd find, oh, there's an, a little bit of pink or blue or green. Um, and it just sort of it made it a more interesting knit because for most of this, once you've got past this ribbing at the top, it's really just knitting in the round for the rest of the jumper um, with some um, ribbing at the cuff and at the hem as well. So this is a beginner pattern on the Petite Knit website, and it really was easier than I thought it was going to be. I was a little bit nervous about the fact that it's got a, um, uh, a knitted down neckline, which sounded tricky, but there is an instructional video on the Petite Knit website, and it's got some English captions you can turn on. Um, and then, so I watched that, but I also watched it in conjunction with a couple of other YouTube videos showing the same technique and then it was not tricky at all. It's a little bit time consuming um, because it was a new technique for me, but apart from that, nothing tricky about it. This top section is all just ribbing, which gets bigger and bigger as you work down. And then as I mentioned, then it's all just knitted after that. And then the, the sleeves also have increases. So you end up with a little bit of a balloon shape. So I'll put some pictures in of me wearing it. It does end up a little bit of a boxy shape, I feel like. Um, so I like to tuck this in and get, um, get it just a bit more fitted around my waist. I suppose if I wanted to make more fitted kind of style, I could um, decrease the number of stitches before I do that ribbing and bring it in that way a little bit. But but all in all, I am really, really happy with the way this turned out. I really love the feeling of this wool. I think I'm going to buy more in a different colorway. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing this all winter. I chose to make a size large in the Sunday sweater. And that pattern is available up to a 51 inch bust measurement. So if you've been watching my videos for a little while, you might remember that I am working on a hand pieced quilt at the moment, and it's been my goal to complete one block a month this year. And I did get on track with April and May, and in April and May, I completed blocks seven and eight of my Journey Home quilt by Blooming Poppies. So I'll put in a picture of the eight completed blocks all together, and you can see there's a gap just for one more, which I'm hoping to finish in June. I won't talk more about that pattern today because I have talked about it in quite a few videos this year, but links to every pattern I've talked about today will be in the description box below. You might also be interested to know that I am keeping a Google document that I'm updating with each of these um, monthly completed makes videos um, because sometimes I feel like I'm thinking, oh, that person made a Pietra Pan or that person made a Galaxy T and I can't remember which video it was, but I really want to watch that video again. So if there's ever um, a garment that you want to be able to look up um, and see if I've made it and find the particular video, um, in the Google document, it'll have a list of pattern designers and then a list of patterns that I've made and which video I'm talking about that pattern in. I'm not sure if that will be helpful for anyone, but um, I'm making it anyway, even if it's just helpful for myself. But um, I've put a I've put the link to that in the About Me section. Um, if you go to my um, YouTube About Me. You won't be able to click on it, but if you copy it and paste it into your own web browser, it should take you to that particular Google document. Um, and then you'll be able to see um, if you're looking for a particular pattern, um, whether I've talked about it, you can find which video that was in. So you're not having to sort of search through yourself. Hopefully that helps someone out there. So that brings me to the end of everything I made in April and May. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back into making these monthly videos. So hopefully you've seen my plans for the month of June. Otherwise, please do check that out. Thank you so much for watching today. And to anyone who has left any comments on any of my previous videos, I really do appreciate it. And I love chatting with you. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye bye. Thank you.